What's going on Dividend Chasers? Dividend Bloodhound here with another investing episode. In today's episode we're going to be talking about Trading 212 and what the differences are between Trading 212 Invest and the Trading 212 ISA and what are the perks and the downsides of either one or the other. I would love for this video to bring you some value today and if it does then please do smash that like button in the corner over there and if you're brand new to my channel then do please consider subscribing and ticking the notification bell so you get notified of brand new content just like this one and some of my stock picks as well further down the line. That being said, let's roll the intro and I'll see you on the flip side. Catch you on the other side. Hey again guys, welcome into the video. So some of the basics first, Trading212 and the Trading212 app and the desktop version are a conduit and a brokerage to allow you to invest in the stock market. Not just the UK stock market, but a whole plethora of others across Europe and the USA. Trading212 has been around for quite a while now and it offers these services, it, the ISA, and the invest account for completely free. There's no foreign exchange fee, there's no commission, and there's no monthly subscription service like there is with Free Trade and their ISA subscription. It is FCA regulated, so it has that rubber stamp that you know that there's a conduct authority looking over their shoulders to make sure they're doing everything legitimately. And also your investments are covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, the FSCS, it is a bit of a tongue twister and your investments are covered to the tune of £85,000. If you invest over that amount, then that is not covered should trading 212 go bankrupt. Your money would then, past 85000 be at risk. But I know a great deal of retail investors aren't over that amount, so we don't really have to worry too much about that. Trading212 have been around for quite a while now. They have had over 50 million people download their app and over 180,000 customers actually review it. So their customer base is absolutely huge now. When we take into account that Free Trade only recently passed 200,000 customers period, you can see just how far Trading212 is ahead of its peers. And that's largely because it's got the CFD option as well as the invest and the ISA option that we're talking about today. Choosing between the Trading212 Invest account and the ISA account is actually quite difficult because on the outside, they're largely the same. The only real differences are, is the way that you will be taxed on one or the other. And if you max out your ISA, which I will come to later, you get a 20,000 pound allowance for it each year. If you go over that, then you will automatically have to use the Trading212 Invest side of things Otherwise, you won't be able to invest any further because your ISA only gives you a tax wrapper for the first £20,000 that you invest. Although £20,000 is an awful lot of money for most people and most retail investors aren't getting away £20,000 a year. So looking at Trading212 Invest then, you have the option to invest in over 4,000 stocks across a whole multitude of stock markets all across Europe, the USA and the UK. As already mentioned, the zero commission, fractional shares are available. There's no Forex fee either, but Free Trade does have that. And there's unlimited trades and there's also soon to be released auto investing and your pies option. I do believe that has been rolled out now actually, so most people will be able to access that. And to be fair, at that point, you can mirror image that straight over to the ISA because the ISA offers exactly the same things. Free shares are also available in both accounts, whether you hold an ISA or an invest account or both. Your free shares, if you do refer a friend, you they will go into whichever account, account you set up first. In my instance, it's the invest account. And my link is in the description below if you do fancy setting yourself up a trading 212 account. You get up to £100 for signing up, signing up with a link and depositing a pound. What could be better? Now, onto the issues with the invest side of things. 
If you're lucky enough to gain over £12,000 in gains across your investments, then when you sell that investment, you will have to pay capital gains tax on it if it's over £12,000. Now, the amount of tax that you will pay scales depending on how much other income you have from that year, whether that be your primary job or other investments, etc. So it's kind of hard to give you a prediction, but just to let you know that if you gain more than £12,000 in the investor account, then you will be expected to pay capital gains tax on that income if you sell your investments. It's only also worth thinking that it's only when you sell your investments you pay that tax. So if you keep it for 10 years and then ultimately you gain £80,000 off it, then you won't have to pay tax until you actually sell that investment. So that's also worth considering. The next side of things is also, if you earn over £2,000 worth of dividends in a year, if you're lucky enough to do that, then you will also have to pay tax on that if you own the invest account. And that will be an awful lot of money you will have to have invested to gain that £2,000 in a year, but still, the rule still stands that you will have to pay tax over that amount. Again, this level of tax will vary depending on what your other income is and other investing income. But once you get over that £2,000 threshold, you will pay a minimum of 7.5% tax on whatever dividends you earn past that point. It doesn't get any lower than that. It only gets higher if you're a higher rate taxpayer or even higher than that if you're lucky enough. So some of you are probably now saying, well, what's the point in the investor account at all? Well, when I go over into the ISA and explain the ISA side of things, you can only invest a maximum of £20,000. If you're lucky enough to achieve that, then you have no choice but to go into the invest account or go into an invest account with another brokerage company. There's no getting around the fact that you have a £20,000 limit in your ISA and you only have one of them every year you just can't get around that so you'll have to have an invest account when you get past that point so moving on to the trading 212 isa then you have exactly the same perks as the invest account and to all intents and purposes the app will look exactly the same and handle exactly the same apart from you might see that you have an isa allowance on your investments which as i've already said maxes out for the moment until the government change it at £20,000 each year. Now, if you're fortunate enough to invest a whole £20,000 each year, then kudos to you because you're doing very, very well to be able to put that amount of money away. You can only do that with one account. You can only open and hold one ISA each year. You can roll multiple ISAs over so you can stack them on top of each other and all that income will be safe from the taxman. So that is a really good thing. So you can stack them on top of each other and keep a significant amount of money away from the tax man and the tax government and the tax system. Uh, but you can only do 20,000 a year. But within that, all the gains that you earn and all the dividends that you earn, they're all yours to keep and keep hold of forever and indefinitely, as long as you keep the money inside its little tax wrapper in the ISA. You can move your ISA into Trading 212 and you can also move it out of Trading 212 if you really want to. No matter which way you do it, you can still only have one, but you can move old ones to uh, Trading 212 so you can amalgamate them together. As long as you don't go past that one that you've set up each year, you are free to do whatever you want. And if you have multiple ISAs that you've got from different places, and you want to combine them all and then that combined figure makes £15,000 or 20000 or less, then that is absolutely fine. You'll be able to roll them all into Trading 212 and get them performing for you. You'll probably have to sell them to cash first and then transfer the money in that way. But I do believe they are working on a system where you will be able to transfer it whole and out whole. And that's another thing. If you want to move your ISA from Trading 212 to another provider, for the moment, I believe you have to sell all your positions to cash first and then transfer the money out that way. And it will take a few days for that money to then hit your bank account or go on to your new provider. Another thing worth considering with the ISA is that HMRC 
have different rules for ISA investing. So some trading 212 ISA holders recently got their fingers burned when HMRC decided that you weren't allowed to have NIO, NIO, the electric Chinese car maker, in your ISA account, and it forced trading 212 to liquidate people's positions and sell them and give them the money back and you're not allowed to invest that money back into NEO because it, uh, because it basically sold and you weren't allowed to do it in accordance with the new rules. So you had to invest that money elsewhere in other companies that people might not necessarily want to of. So you have to think about, there is a list somewhere online that you can find out what companies are allowed in your ISA and what companies are not and that's available on the Trading212 forums, I believe. So in conclusion, guys, most retail investors aren't gonna exceed the 20,000 pound threshold that is applied to the ISA. So as long as you're not investing in NEO or other prohibited companies by HMRC, you're probably better off having an ISA. There's no cost to it either. So if you're gonna invest your money, you might as well make sure that it stays tax-free year on year on year, and then only go into the invest option side of things if you really have to because you've already filled your ISA allowance up or you have an ISA with another provider. Now me personally, I started my ISA with free trade. I've got a considerable amount of money in it. It's not near the 20,000 pound mark, but I actually have to pay for that option. I am happy to do so, I might add, because I, I enjoy using free trade for that, and it's only three pound a month. But I have to, I have to, accept that but i use trading 212 as the growth side of the, as my growth portfolio and i use the invest option for that because i already have an isa and i'm going to renew that isa year on year with free trade so i keep all my stocks and shares in one place and then that three pound admin fee that i pay will then become very very cheap as i have such a large amount of money invested with them now trading 212 have a zero fee for having the ISA at the moment. So that would be absolutely great if you started with them and you could do exactly the same thing and it won't cost you a penny. In the future, will they put a charge on that? Who knows? I doubt it, but there are murmurings out there that people do think that they might charge for it in the future, especially if free trade start making a hell of a lot of money off it. But yeah, in conclusion, I would say Open up your ISA, use Trading212's trading two ISA allowance first, and then if you're lucky enough to fulfill £20,000 in a year, then look to move to the invest side of things. And if you're gonna have an ISA, start it with Trading212 because it's completely free, and you don't have to pay anything for it, and you get all the tax benefits. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I would really appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video, and hopefully share it to as many people as we can if you're brand new to this channel it'd be also awesome if you could subscribe and tick the notification bell that all being said i hope you've enjoyed it it's been an absolute pleasure to, pleasure even to bring to you and i will catch you in another investing episode bye bye